Hello everyone. Um I can see loads of you joining already. Hi Sherry. Oh, I'm really glad to see familiar names. <laughs> So I've just started the stream already a little bit early just to kind of settle into things, let people join, that kind of stuff. Um, hi Tamara! Um, I'm not going to do anything yet. Uh, I'm just going to hang out here for a minute, wait for people to join, um, just check that like the stream is going fine and like you can all see me and you can hear me. Um, hi Amy! Um, nice to see you again. Oh, I, I can't mention everybody whose name I recognize, but like just know that I absolutely love seeing all your names coming up. It really makes me so happy and feel so supported. And also to see all lots of new names, I am really excited that you're taking the time to uh, come and watch my stream. <laughs> so yeah uh just to let you know there's like a slight delay between um uh what i'm saying and what you're seeing any anything between about five and 20 seconds so um if i'm a little bit like slow or what seems to be slow with responding to what you're saying in the chat that would be why um hi everyone oh yeah please tell us where you're where you're watching from um and uh what i'd also love to know is if you are like are you in your own art space or like are you at the kitchen table like what's your what's your art situation i i'd love to know uh from uh some loads of people from the u.s uh, oh, some Dutch people in here. Hi. Yes, I am Dutch. So you can, if you want to respond in Dutch, if that's easier for you, if that language easier for you, then please feel free. Um, hi, um, Belgium. Yay. Poland, obviously Finland. Oh, we're getting a lot of, um, a lot of variety of locations. Uh, I imagine not many people from Australia, seeing as it's the middle of the night there. <laughs> My mouth moving matches my words. Oh, that's great to know. I'm really glad to hear that. I, it's not always, um, it's not always uh, guaranteed uh, with a live stream, so I'm glad. I did turn on uh, closed captions, so they should be available. If they're not, I really apologize. It's it's not within my hands. I've you know I've ticked the option for them to be there, so I do hope that they are there. Um, uh, Sarah Jane is in a, at a very messy table. Yes, my table is also very messy, but this bit is zoomed in. <laughs> so you can't see the mess. It's great. Oh, basement studio. I'm very jealous. I'm very jealous. Oh, Stephanie's already covered in messy paint splatters, which is great to hear. I love that. I've been doing some art as well, watching the previous streams and stuff. That's awesome. Uh, great. All right. Um, so it's four o'clock now. So this is the um, this is the official start time of the stream. So um, I just want to say uh, officially welcome, v welcome to the stream. Thank you so much for watching. Um, in case you don't know me, I am Iris from Iris Impressions Art. I am a uh, mixed media artist, art journaler. I'm also a teacher, a vlogger, and more recently a podcaster. Um, lots and lots of creative things. Um, I have taught on Wanderlust before, I think it was in 2019, don't quote me on that. Um, and I'm teaching again in 2023, which I'm super excited about. Um, so, you know, I'll see you around if you are taking the course. Um, just to let you know, in case you are, uh, two notes, in case you are watching this via my YouTube channel and that's how you found it, just to let you know that there is a link in the description where you can um, sign up to the Wanderlust Live weekend so that you can access all of the amazing content uh, that is being created for you. So not just this stream, but lots of other things, uh, interviews, videos, live streams, and I think there's even going to be like a quiz at the end. Um, and um, let's see, uh, so you can sign up and it's free. Um, if you are watching this via the Everything Art Classroom and you are wondering who it is that I am talking to, <laughs> um, 
if you press the button that says watch on YouTube, then you will be able to participate in the live chat too. Um, so, right, that's that. Oh, I am wearing a super cool apron, which is the Wanderlust Live apron, and um, you can actually buy this one yourself. I know that Kasia was wearing hers in her, in her live stream earlier, um, so you can find this in the shop, and Amy is going to um, give you a little link in the chat, just in case you want to check that out. Um, let's see, I'm just checking some of the comments. Okay, um, I'm gonna just talk I'm just going to talk to you for maybe like another three or four minutes. Um, but um, before, so before I get into the like the practical uh, demoing portion of the stream, and when I w once I get into it, I will obviously switch to a bigger view of my desk, so you're not looking at the tiny <laughs> view of my desk. Um, so I just want to quickly tell you um, what this stream is going to be about. So um, this is called the joy of experimenting. We're going to be um, experimenting with our art supplies, preferably lots of different supplies, especially if you've got different brands maybe uh, of the same type of supply it'd be really good if you can kind of like start experimenting with those so that you can start um, kind of building up your um, um, uh, like your knowledge of your of your art supplies and also find your favorite so you can say like oh I love working with that or I don't really like working with that because I think at the end of the day it's really important that when we make art we're making art for ourselves we're making art with the art supplies that we're excited about and nobody else can tell you what you should be excited about I know that goes on a lot I can enthuse a lot about different art supplies but at the end of the day um, you need to uh, experiment with your supplies that you have uh, so that you can figure out what it is that uh, allows you to express yourself the best. Um, right, let's have a look. Um, so um, I also encourage you to bring your own supplies. So I'm going to be showing you some supplies that I have, but obviously you might not have the same. So if there's anything that you've been wanting to try out, anything that um, you might um, want me to uh, have a comment on, like if you say like, oh, I've got this gouache like do you know anything about that or do you have any that you can show let me know I can be responsive during this uh, stream um, you know I've got plans but if you want me to show something specific um, then please um, uh, please um, please let me know um, so obviously this is Wanderlust Live it's created by the wonderful people who also organized Wanderlust. Wanderlust is a year-long course. Um, it starts in January and it is a uh, course on which you get new lessons every week from different teachers. Uh, so there's a huge variety of different kind of techniques and teachings and styles and stuff that you can um, that you can try on and also um, it's a great way of just being creative kind of throughout the year because there'll be something to do and a person to encourage you kind of every step of the way, which I think is a great thing because for me personally, motivation is, um, is, is a big... <laughs> is a big struggle uh, when it comes to making art and to have something where you can kind of show up um, whenever you want to, whenever you have time to do something new. I think that's that's really great. So that is something that uh, Wanderlust, the course, is um, is great for. Um, you um, uh, at the moment, it's actually on sale uh, for ninety nine dollars. It's usually I think one hundred and seventy five. Maybe Amy can back me up on that um, and give the specific details. So if you would like to sign up uh, for the discounted price, that's up until the 31st of October. Um, if you would like to sign up and use my link, that would be great. Uh, my link is an affiliate link. It doesn't cost you any extra, but it's just a little bit of support um, uh, for me personally if you use that link to sign up to the course um let's have a look um i think that if you'd like to know how, uh, how wanderlust is different from lifebook i'd really encourage you to um drop an email to the everything art team because i think that uh, they will be able to answer that question um much better than i can um in in this kind of limited time that we've got here uh, on this stream okay um let's have a look all right, so I'm going to show you the art supplies that I have got here. So let me switch my view. There we go. 
Um, I have put my art supplies together in this little caddy and um, hang on my screen has just refreshed all of a sudden without me doing anything so I just want to wait until everything is back uh, and double check that it's still good. You'll have, uh, you'll have to excuse my technology because uh, I am working with a very, very old computer um, which is kind of complaining at me that I'm making it do live streaming, um, but hopefully um, this is all working. Really sorry for going quiet. I just want to make sure um, that I'm definitely still with you. Because I don't know right now. Um. Okay, um, wait. I think I'm still with you. It's just that I can't see it at the moment. So, um, uh, hang on. Okay, it's back now. Okay, great. Cool. Um, I can't see the chat right now, so I can't see what people are saying to let me know if I've just been talking for no reason or um, if there is actually a problem. Um, is that you? It's fine. It's fine. Okay. My husband's just come in and told me it's fine. My computer's really struggling with this. I think the stream's fine, but at the moment I can't see the chat, so um, it's just all going really slowly for me. Um, <laughs> But thank you so much for your patience. Okay, I'm gonna just keep talking and I'm gonna, and this chat has loaded again for me. Uh, I am not going to do any more switching back between cameras because I think that was the thing that made my computer go, oh, whoops, we're not gonna do this. So I'm gonna um, talk you through briefly um, through these uh, supplies and then let's just get going and um, start making some art and playing with these supplies. Um, okay, let me just have a quick look at um oh i'm i'm really grateful that you guys are talking to each other in the chat i think that's great like giving you know answering each other's question giving each other information i think that's great because um often you know like uh, lots of people have different experiences and stuff um that they can share so that's really cool so um i've got my um little caddy here full of art supplies i'm going to quickly run through what i've got um i would encourage you to grab similar supplies so when i say oh i've got some acrylic paints here you grab what you know some acrylic paints that you have as well they don't have to be the same brand just you know you're experimenting with uh whatever it is that you have all right thanks lisa for that little encouragement i am definitely forgetting to breathe <laughs> oh, okay wonderful all right Thanks so much for your encouragement. All right, so um, I've got some small sheets of watercolor paper or any, this is not actually watercolor paper, just some sturdy paper. Uh, obviously, if you would like to use your um, art journal, because obviously you're experimenting, you might want to record that in some kind of book form, that is also a-okay. Uh, you can make notes and stuff like that. Um, acrylic paints, I've got, I've purposefully chosen different ones of different brands that I have so that I can really kind of start experiencing and and noticing the difference between these brands and what I like what I don't like what I think it might be good for that kind of stuff and it will just like get added to my kind of mental 
uh, mental notes of like uh, for when um, I am making art uh, at an other art session and then I'll I'll know like oh I want a thick paint well then I'm gonna grab that brand or I want a thin paint and I'm gonna grab a different brand um, some pencils so like colored pencils graphite pencils if any of you uh, know and love the Stabilo all that could be something that you can experiment with um, some crayons I've got some uh, oil pastels I've got some um, what do you call these? Uh, water soluble pastels. I've got a woody there. Um, some watercolors. I've got two different brands of watercolors here, or even three brands. So that would be interesting to um, have an experiment with. Then some pens. I have got some ballpoints. I've got some black fine liners, some paint pens. Uh, I've even got this brush pen here that has ink in it. Um, what else? I have got some inks um, that we can do some splattering with and uh, I have grabbed some different brushes. I've got soft thin brushes, I have got bristly thick brushes and um, like this really big one as well. Uh, and what else? I have got a water brush. Um, what else? I have got a uh, plastic key card um, to um, do some scraping of paint with and then I have also got my trusty brayer there and I've got some stamps uh, even some stamps that I've carved myself and a stamp pad so if you've got similar supplies like that just grab some of those and then we're going to get going uh, but first I'm going to have a quick look at the chat okay lots of advice here uh, from people who are uh, telling us about uh, how um, Wanderlust is different from Lifebook which is very helpful to know um, let's have a look Um, yeah, you get lifetime access to um, all the Wanderlust lessons, which is great. Uh, so you can obviously like go back to them at your convenience, even redo lessons that you, you know, might have really loved that kind of stuff. I really like that. Um, oh my goodness, I'm being a enabler because Tamara now needs to get a cute caddy for her art supplies too. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, I have prepared uh, a number of these uh, little pieces of uh, paper, like um, sturdy paper, and um, I'm going to uh, just start with some of the art supplies. So I, um, and I really hope that you will kind of go along with this as well and get to know some of your supplies. So first of all, I have got some different acrylics. So I've got this, um, this is a Dela Rowney. Again, don't uh, feel like this is an advertisement for any of these brands. These are just the brands that I have that I have got that I have liked picking up at any point, one point or another. When I went art supply shopping, because we obviously we all love art supply shopping. It's my favorite hobby. Um, and um, um, so I'm just gonna like experiment with these and kind of note for myself what these are all like and what I like and what I don't like. Oh hi Jackie, I'm so glad to see you. I'm really glad you're here. I hope you've got some art supplies here with you so you're working alongside. Um, so I've got these four different brands. Um, and obviously these are my art supplies. I've already been using them a lot, but it's always good to have a little refresher. Um, so what am I going to do? Um, I've got these here and now let's, um, let's just grab this thick brush. So we're actually killing two birds with one stone um, and trying out a couple of things like a tool and a supply at the same time so a bristly brush which gets a lots lots of texture so that's kind of what I want you to do uh, when you are using these art supplies I want you to like look and go like oh this is creating lots of texture or this is not creating texture at all or um, what I have um, I've I got given this um, I think it was this I got given this um, uh, brush a, a while back and then I started painting with it and I was like oh my god I have no control with this brush and I think that's just like that might be perfect for when you want to be really loose and when you when you want to like basically push yourself out of your comfort zone or um, let go of perfectionism that kind of stuff but I found it really challenging so you know notice to yourself 
Um, do I have control? Do I not have control? Oh, look, I can do a kind of a, like an interesting dry brushing technique with this paint and with this brush. So that's super interesting. Right, I'm going to just um, kind of semi-clean this brush a little bit. Oh, but now what I've done, because I'm cleaning my brush, it's just off screen, so sorry, you can't see that. But um, I'm cleaning my brush, but what that means is my brush is now going to be wet. So my decision is, am I going to use this wet brush? to do one of these colors or am I going to use a new dry brush like these are all different decisions that you can um, um, make and that will then influence what happens um, to your paint so there's some slight red paint still on this brush so what's going to happen when I uh, brush on this very kind of thick and creamy paint well not too much actually not too much contamination from that wet brush very interesting okay now I'm going to actually purposefully not clean my brush and do this I can really I don't know if you can see it obviously um, on the camera but I can really feel such a difference between this one red and then that the first red that I did um, and that's just really interesting and if you're the type of person to make notes then I definitely think you should make notes I'm not I'm like I'm not that organized <laughs> I hate my handwriting, whatever. <laughs> so I'm not going to make notes, but um, I am making mental notes um, about like, what does it feel like? Uh, what do I like? So this was a much more kind of textured thick paint. Um, and so was this pink. And this red is actually a much more smooth paint, um, um, slightly thinner. So super interesting to um, to find out. Oh yeah, there's a bit of a discussion in the chat about the um, um, the star supplies, which is um, uh, uh, part of the structure of um, Wanderlust, which I really, really love um, because that really allows you, and I feel like it, it really ties in very well with this particular live stream because it's really about getting to know your supplies and really digging in to getting to know a specific supply but then also from the point of view of different teachers so different teachers are gonna like teach you completely different approaches or different ways of thinking or different ways of using the same type of supplies which is um what i think is really cool um, I'm going to use a different brush for this pink. Let's have a look. Oh, um, so because I've used a very textured brush for these ones, I'm going to use a super smooth brush for this one. There we go. Oh, this is quite, it's a much more, like it's a thick paint, but it's also quite, um, like the viscosity is also kind of slightly more, um, like loose. I don't know how to how to explain it it's not as thick and um it's like these other ones were more dry this one's very wet if that makes sense wet but still with a lot of body and texture and then i can also try and just like put a little bit of this one on top of the other ones like what happens then and also you know you can refer back to this you can refer back and say oh yeah when i put this one on top of the other one i really like that effect so i'm going to do that like in my art journal page or something like that um right so um the uh, star supply that my lesson is going you know, on wanderlust is going to be a, uh, about is actually going to be pens and i've got a really fun lesson planned about uh where i'm going to be using paint pens and we're going to be using the um uh, like the permanent properties of a paint pen to really let go of perfectionism and i'm really looking forward to that Okay, um, I'm going to put this one away. I have a slight problem of like lack of space. Like I, uh, I'm gonna put this on the floor. <laughs> That's what you get when your art space is like literally in a corner of your bedroom because that is that is where my art space is. Um, don't let your space hold you back. Um, oh yeah, it does look as if I uh, wrote the word love. That's really cool. I love that you saw that. Um, so I'm going to actually use these same supplies again, but this time I am going to use different tools. I am going to put away the brushes for a second, put them out of the way, and I'm going to be using my key card and my brayer. 
Okay, so now I say that you don't need any specific supplies and stuff, but if you don't have a brayer, I, I highly recommend getting one. But obviously, like, you know, you need to try these things and uh, decide if it's for you, because maybe, maybe it is, maybe it's not. I love brayers because of the texture that they create. So let's see, what am I going to do? I am just going to um, um, uh, smooth some of this paint out onto uh, this card with my key card. It's a great scrapey tool. You get really nice smooth surface um, like that. And then um, this is maybe a good opportunity also to talk about uh, like wet versus dry. Because obviously, when I'm demoing here, um, I'm not really letting stuff dry. And when you don't let stuff dry, um, you know, when you then apply a paint on top of it, again, it can really push into each other. Um, and I don't know if you've noticed, but I have picked all these colors here that are very similar. They are very near to each other on the color wheel. So I've got pinks and I've got reds. And I haven't really got anything else. And that was a deliberate choice because... Um, that means that even if I don't have time to dry my work or I, like I don't want to subject you to my heat tool because it will be super noisy um, even if I can't do that I know that I'm not going to start creating mud uh, with these with these um, colors because when these colors are gonna mix they're just gonna make a similar shade of uh, of that color. They're not going to be opposite each other and create a brownish tint. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so I am um, now scraping some of this paint on top of the previous layer that I've done, and I'm actually scraping it quite a bit so that you see the previous layer through it, and I think that's really interesting. But what you can also do is apply it much more thickly, like that. Um, but obviously that will take longer to dry. So um, if you're um, creating along with this, I'd love to know uh, what supplies you've got, what colors you're using, uh, what are you noticing? Obviously, like, don't get paint on your device <laughs> by typing. Oh, actually, I hadn't said yet. Um, if you um, are on social media and you want to share what you're doing, um, you can use uh, the hashtag, uh, hashtag Wanderlust Live. Uh, you can tag your posts on Instagram, your stories. Um, and if you'd like me uh, to see it, and if you'd like me to be able to like repost it, then please tag me. I'm at iris.impressions.art. And you can also tag everything art, which is at everything art UK. And um, when you do that, it just just, you know make sure that we see it and we can like see all your wonderful art and art spaces and you enjoying the lives and all that kind of stuff so um just so that you know um let's have a look at what you guys are saying oh that's great so um uh, Joan is saying that she's sharing uh, completed pieces in our art journal flip through at eight. So uh, that's great. Yes, and two other students are also going to be sharing flip throughs of their work that they created on Wanderlust. So that's a great um, way of uh, having a little look at what like real students are creating because I think that is so important to get that feedback from you know people who have actually done it. Um, let's have a look. Um, yeah, some great points are being made here in the chat. That's great. Thank you so much for uh, like sharing your experience. Um, yes, yeah, so um, let's continue. I'm going to grab uh, my brayer now and do a little bit of brayering. So brayer is great for texture uh, and you get really different results depending on what paint you use. So I find that a brayer works best with quite thick paint. Now the paint that I'm using, it is a heavy body paint here, but it isn't the thickest paint that I've got. Um, it's quite fluid when it comes out of that um, out of that tube. Um, but now I'm getting some really nice texture. Um, kind of like, it reminds me of the texture that you get when you press your hand into, into wet paint. Um, and um, one of the things that I love is I love building up layers and I feel like scraping your paint, brayering your paint, all of those things are great for um, uh, getting those really complex layers and getting that really like what I like to call like a yummy texture. 
Okay, so I've done this one. Um, just pop that on the floor there. Let's hope I don't step into it in a minute. Okay. Um, what's next? So, um, obviously, any of the things that I'm demoing here, you can uh, combine. So, I'm kind of like treating each uh, art supply kind of discreetly like okay now I'm doing acrylics and now I'm gonna do something else but um, you could also do acrylics and then do pencils on top of it we might if the stuff is dry in a little bit I might come back to it and add some stuff on top right so I've got some pencils here um, some graphite uh, and you can see I have stuck to that similar kind of uh, color scheme again so I've got uh, a red I've got a couple of pinks and then I've got some graphite and some uh, the stabilo all which is black um, right so what I love uh, is that there's some def definitely several things that I love okay first of all is like I like noticing the different textures of different pencils so I'm just making some marks and um, actually what I've got here is I've got this uh, regular um, colored pencil and then here I've got a uh, what's it called a China graph pencil which feels much more crayony and I actually love um, for me what's really important is that when I put my um, pencils down on the paper that the feeling of it like as in like the physical feeling that I get in my fingers and in my hand as I'm doing that 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 is something that um, makes me happy like I don't want it to be kind of like an icky feeling I really dislike um, um, pencils that feel very dry um, so that's really interesting uh, to kind of to uh, to notice so do you like a, a pencil that is like a kind of a dry application or do you like something that feels really like waxy and creamy all right okay sorry every time I go quiet it's because I'm reading the chat I mean you can tell because like I'll be looking at the screen um, right, so I'm going to just keep going, making these little swatches of my different pencils. Again, I am not writing down what I'm doing because that just doesn't make me happy. Um, but so you, I really want to encourage you to do what makes you happy. If swatching and like writing down the names of the colors and stuff, if that makes you happy, then you should definitely do it. And if it doesn't make you happy, then I give you permission not to do it. Um, right, so we have got some um, pencils. And then um, what I also like for my pencils is to um, have different types of application. So what if I hold my pencil like really at the end of it uh, and then kind of like just start making some organic marks. I really like that. Um, or make some stripes like that. Um, pressing really hard or not pressing hard at all what happens how does that feel how do I like that um, and like you know that one comes across really nice and then we've also got um, we've got water soluble pencils so this black one that I'm using is water soluble I don't think any of the other ones are water soluble although graphite might be slightly uh, let's have a little you know let's have a little experiment I don't know you know that gets a really dark uh, color love it but I can fan it out with more water and then it goes really light gray so that's really satisfying and then let's see obviously that doesn't react because these are like waxy pencils but that one nope doesn't react and neither does that so that's really interesting to know so that especially like when we get to the pens um, that will be important as well to just take a mental note of um, and um, because you know sometimes you will um, okay let me tell you a little story I bought a friction pen you know these are these pens that you can erase when you um, use the like the little rubber on the back of them um, and uh, I put them over on my art journal page and then I used my heat tool to dry my page and heat is basically in this context the same as friction so the pen disappeared so hence it's good to experiment <laughs> with your art supplies just to see if they are if they are waterproof if they are heatproof 
Um, let's have a look at what people are saying. Pencils that set my teeth on edge when I scribble, yeah, and then like I don't know what the name of that emoji is, but yes, I, I it's like nails on a chalkboard, right? Like it's horrible. Ugh. <laughs> um, um, and um, how do you clean up a soft rubber brayer with layers of gunky dried paint? That is such a good question. Sorry, I missed that before. Um, um, so uh, that's a that's a question from Robin. Um, so there are two techniques that I have. One is when you you wait until it's really really thick, and then you can just peel it off. And you might need to use carefully use a craft knife. Obviously, you don't want to damage either your brayer or yourself in the process. But when the layers of paint are quite thick, uh, and especially if you've used a lot of like kind of glossy acrylics, then you will be able to peel it off. Um, the other trick that I um, have used before is to soak the um, the brayer in a dissolved uh, dishwasher tablet overnight. Uh, so in like you dissolve the dishwasher tablet in some water um, and leave the brayer in it. You can this brayer that I have actually um, I think it comes apart, so you can just use the just put the rollery bit in it. Um, and um and then kind of like in the morning um or when you come back to it it will all kind of like start disintegrating and you can peel it off much more easily um let's have a look yeah soak in warm water because the because acrylics are basically plastic so when you heat things up so when you use warm water they become more flexible again um yeah um uh, somebody else said something yeah, I enjoy peeling them off as well. Um, okay, right. So that was my little um, um, my little pencil experiment. Um, let's see. Do you think maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna add something to this? So I'm gonna move on to ink now. I think because um, I do want to experiment a little bit with um, doing you know kind of combining these things. So. I, I am drawing with the eyedropper tool um, and also I really want to encourage you if you are working along um, with this session if at some point you're like oh gosh I've got this thing here lying here that I'm interested in but oh but Iris isn't demoing that supply just like just do it just you know <laughs> um, you're here for you and um, I'm just kind of like here I'm your host and I am here to encourage you but I'm not here to stifle you or to say this is how you need to do it or um, anything like that like there's no rules um, on how you're supposed to be using this session oh I really like this obviously I've gone completely over what I did but it does feel like it's kind of slightly like a resist maybe I can lift this up a little bit um, Let's see if I can just dab this and then I can see what came underneath. Interesting, interesting. Um, and I just want to let you know, like, I didn't, um, I didn't practice any of these things beforehand because I wanted it to be kind of like genuine experimentation. Like, we'll just see what happens in real time. Um, and, you know, that is part of the learning and the playing and stuff. So what should we do now? Let's do some, uh, let's do some crayons. Okay, let me know. Are you the type of person who cleans their art supplies and like their brayers and brushes and all those things? Do you clean it as you go? Or do you kind of like let everything build up for months um and then clean it like i'd love to know like which camp you uh fall into yeah that's such a good point stephanie stephanie just said that um um she doesn't like her brayer to be non-gunky because when because then it doesn't make any texture and that's so so true like when you've got clean brayer there's hardly it just it just brayers the color on smooth and when your brayer is like super uh, uh, super kind of like uh, built up with textures you get much more interesting texture so if you're like a someone who really wants to be in control of what it looks like then definitely clean your brayer if you want that randomness then don't clean your brayer and it will really um, give you interesting um, and unexpected results
Okay, so I've got some crayons here and one of the things I love about crayons is the texture that they produce like so you see the application and then you see the kind of the gaps in between and oh I just find it so satisfying um, so all of these in terms of application look fairly similar but they are quite different in terms of their properties because um, all of the ones on this side are water soluble and these two are not water soluble they are actually oil pastels um so personally i don't like uh activating my water soluble crayons that's just not really something that i um, enjoy um but that is obviously definitely something that you can do with them so um there we go that's what you can do i don't tend to do it myself because i don't enjoy it although i'm doing it now and i'm like oh gosh this is actually quite interesting you're allowed to change your mind by the way i changed my mind about uh neo color 2 they got recommended a lot when i first started i don't know 10 years ago more than 10 years ago and i um didn't get what the fuss was about <laughs> and then i realized i just didn't like to dilute them and then I found that I actually quite like using them. So it's really important to like allow yourself to have your own opinions. Like don't rigidly, rigidly stick to them, obviously, but um, you know, uh, you can always change your mind. That is definitely allowed. Um, what else can I do with these? Let's have a look. Oh yes, that's something. What you can do is you can actually wet your paper. So I'm going to do that here. So I'm going to wet the paper with quite a bit of water. There we go. And then you can use your water soluble crayon to draw into it. And that gives you a interesting kind of feathered effect just looks slightly different from applying it dry and then wetting it it's just another little interesting technique um so that's uh crayons and then also when you are using uh crayons that are not water soluble again you can use them and do a little resist so let's try and do a tiny little resist here with some diluted um diluted ink and so what happens is that the ink goes onto the paper, it absorbs into the paper wherever the crayon is not, um, which is very exciting. And most of us learn this in primary school, I think. I mean, I'm, I'm sure, maybe it's a Dutch thing, but like that's such a primary school, like preschool, primary school type of thing to do crayon resists um, with uh, like um, watercolors and stuff on top. Yeah, woody pencils look great on black paper and so do Neo Color 2s. They look, they pop so much and it's it's really, really satisfying. I, I love it. Um, that is also, like, like I said, I didn't enjoy the Neo Color 2s. I even gave them to my kids and then now I've taken them all back again because I'm like, actually, I like them. Um, they're mine. <laughs> Um, so it's like sometimes you just haven't found your way of um, of using them. So uh, what are we going to do now? Oh, let's do some watercolors. So I've got a couple of uh, different types of watercolors. I'm just going to... I, I'm, I'm, a ter I'm terrible about like taking care of my art supplies and stuff, like my brushes and things, but I do always try to put the caps on my paints so that they don't dry out uh, and stuff like that although i'm having trouble with this one come on it doesn't want to it's defying me um okay cool right so i've got um a couple of different types of uh um watercolors let's see if i can kind of fit them into the camera view here for you and then let me try my water brush so I'm going to share a little technique with you that I love, which is I do love to um, write letters. Um, so just kind of like a little bit of like, hi. 
Um, how are you? Talking and writing is difficult. Talking is <laughs> difficult. <laughs> And it just creates um, such a nice little background. Um, obviously, if I was in my own kind of art journal practice, I would be writing lots of meaningful, deep words here right now. <laughs> but I can't right now. So this creates a really nice little background, background texture. Obviously, um, watercolors reactivate when uh, after they're dry. So this is actually already dry. But if I then go over it, it's kind of going to make them disappear. So that's something that you can play with to your advantage. It's just about like having that knowledge of like, oh, is this going to reactivate or not? Um, if you were to use some uh, inks, then they wouldn't reactivate when dry. So I can do that too. I can write some more words. And then once the words are dry, the words that is words, um, once that is dry, it will not... Actually, I'm going to try and do a star, but I cannot do a star and think about it at the same time. There we go. No, that's not a star. That's almost a star. There we go. Gotta really not think about it. <laughs> so once that's dry, that's not going to uh, reactivate. So. Um, you know, you can you can um, experiment with that. Like I, I would say that maybe uh, acrylics could go um, as a first layer, and then you work on top of them, and then watercolors would be more likely to be done on a uh, subsequent layer. But I still really like to say that there are no specific rules. So um, you know, just you go for what what works for you. Right, I'm just gonna uh, use this other uh, type of watercolor that I have. Um, which is Arteza watercolors um, and just try and use those on here and kind of notice the difference like you know have you got any uh, expensive supplies and cheap supplies that you can compare if you you know if you happen to have that is sometimes really good to compare and you know do you understand what the fuss is about or maybe you don't and it's just really good to know and to realize because sometimes I don't know what the fuss is about um, let's just have a look. Um, oh yeah, that's such a good point. Anya is saying that it's about extending the lifetime of uh, her materials uh, rather than about every wanting things to be clean. I do. I have some brushes that I spent a lot of money on and I'm like, yeah, uh, I really... <laughs> I really want to take care of them and make them last a long time, but sometimes I still forget and then like they have crusted paint on them and then I feel terrible. Um, yeah, um, let's have a look. Oh, a plastic tub with wet towels. That is a great, uh, that's a great tip. I think that's a good tip as well for rubber stamps, actually, because especially rubber stamps w with a lot of like intricate designs. And if you use them with paint, which I'm going to do, like now that I'm talking about it, I want to do it. Um, if you don't clean those, then you can really like, um, you can really ruin them or just make them hard to hard to clean um, at a later date. So that's a great little idea. Let's grab another piece of paper. Um... Oh, I'm really glad Dorothy is saying that the that this live stream is giving her lots of ideas on how to experiment. So I'm really glad to hear that. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yes, I have I have a second brayer as well. Uh, although mo all my brayers are messy. Um, um, la la la. Oh, that's really interesting, Marianne. Um, yeah, I have I have Arteza, I have Daniel Smith as well. Not many because they are very very pricey, but they are very unique, which is what I I do like that. I like the fact that so when something is unique, then you're not just like, um, like you can actually understand what makes people excited about them because you can see that they do something different from from a different supply, um, rather than just like you know people raving about something but you don't really understand why. Um, oh, adding uh, watercolor and then adding acrylics and it creates a creamy look. Yes, that's a really good idea. I love that. I love playing also with, um, you know, like wet and dry and like smushing things together. And also this is all about like really 
getting that connection with your art supplies and for it to be really like um um you know like for your own uh practice and pleasure like you know if you like that smushy smush feeling then um then then that that's what you should do um yeah moon glow i've got it in here oh no i don't have it in here actually i've got it somewhere else um yeah actually um um, Zdenka, I'm, mm, mm, that reminds me of something, uh, you saying that you should experiment more with your materials. I love experimenting with my materials if I am kind of in somebody else's company. Like, I find it's hard to create, like, deep and meaningful art when you are, like, in a, in a kind of a social setting. But being, like, having an art date with a friend is such a great, um it's such a great opportunity to um uh to like uh just experiment and play and um kind of not feel alone or whatever like i i love it for that reason um okay i am going to do a little bit of um stamping um i have got i i do have a stamp pad um, but I do realize I forgot to put this on the supply list. So if you don't have this, don't worry. I will first demo uh, something else, which is actually you can use a Neo Color 2 crayon um, and you can um, color your stamp with that. So you, if you dip your uh, Neo Color 2 in some water and then just kind of, uh, what do you call it? Oh, I can't do stuff and talk at the same time. Um, <laughs> color in your stamp with your uh, wet crayon, obviously this has to be a water-soluble crayon, don't put your oil, oil pastels on your stamps, that might not work very well, uh, but like this, and then let's see what happens. Look, nice. Again, not for the perfectionists who want a, um, a, a controllable result, but I love the randomness and I think this this would work so well like maybe on top of a art journal page and then if you keep going then it gets lighter and lighter and it's oh this is very satisfying really like this okay so I like this and then what do I want to do well I like this I want this to dry because I actually want to go in with a contrasting color but I don't want it all to kind of like go into each other uh let's see how are we for time so there's about 10 minutes before the end of this stream uh what have we not done yet um uh what about some pens i'm gonna do a little bit of pens now so let me get these out and so when we think of pens i think we often uh think about like writing so obviously you can do writing and you can do um illegible writing um, which is it's a it's a lovely technique and um, it looks looks really interesting and you wouldn't know that I just wrote that it looks really interesting because it's just scribble writing and it's a great way of also putting um, just meaningful art journaling into your art journal pages nobody else has to read it nobody can read it even you can't read it after a while you won't know what it said um so i love that and so i love actually i do love scribbling with my pens right now i'm not actually writing anything this just kind of looks like writing but it's fake <laughs> just doodling and then with you know with paint pens the sky is the limit because like the name suggests uh they have paint in them so you can you can use them for you know um for drawing like sketching something like here's a little eye i'm gonna do a little iris face with a big eye that's what these are great for but you could also use them for writing or for like something really uh really bold so um where have you got this nice pen so uh what about like a big word uh that we could add so um, I can't. I'm just looking at my screen and it says Wanderlust Live, so I'm gonna go for the word live. Um, so let's just do some blocky text. Oh, and look, this pen hasn't been shaken up for a while, so it's very dry. 
which I actually quite like right now. So that's really cool. So I'm just gonna go with what it's giving me. And that reminds me of this pen that I have, which is a brush pen, which is sold as being like a really nice flowy, do like nice hand lettering with it. And ever since I bought this pen, it's been like really dry and terrible. <laughs> but now that I know that, I know it's dry and terrible. Uh, and I love the dry brushing effect. So it's just a little bit about like, okay, that's what this pen wants to give me. So that's what I'm going to use it for. It's kind of like it's a yes and, you know, although it wasn't a yes and from the uh, from the pen. The pen was blocking me. The pen was not a very good actor, um, but um, but I yes anded it and said, OK, that's now how I'm going to use you. Um, yeah, the neo color on the stamp. I'm glad you're excited about that. So uh, let's go back to that because I think this is relatively dry now and I'm going to do the exact same thing, but this time I'm going to I'm going to use the same stamp, which is still a bit wet, but it's okay. I'm use the same stamp, and then I'm going to use a contrasting color. Um, I'm going to use my watercolor, and I'm going to use um, I don't know if you can see that one that is like a a dark darkish turquoise. This is probably going to be quite wet, so might not get the same result. But let's see. Um, let's see what happens and do a bit of stamping different directions yes very satisfying cool i like it i like it i keep looking up at my um at my camera because usually when i'm filming i'm using my camera that has a little viewfinder so i can check whether like I can see what I'm doing and stuff, but it's not there. This is a different camera, so that's... <laughs> um, so that's fun. I actually really like this now. Um, this nice little kind of super raw... Um, uh, little like Looks like a little art journal page in a way, like just super raw. Um, let's see, what else? I think, I think we've tried all of the different things and... Um, we have only got uh, about five minutes left, so um, uh, let's see, is there anything we want to do? Uh, did, I did do the bray ring, didn't I? Is there anything else? Oh, I didn't use this brush, so I'm just going to go back to... What am I going to go back to? <clears throat> going to go back to this. This is now fairly dry, and then I'm just going to um, use this brush and have a little go on top of it create some texture with these bristles um and the direction of the brush um and it's like it's getting caught on the texture that was created before from the brayer it's all like kind of little waves and then this goes on top of it um and i really love it so yeah it's like experiment too with like are you letting something dry or are you not letting it dry what happens when you scrape something over it is it gonna like smush it or is it like gonna get into all those nice grooves and textures um super interesting things to just kind of find out and realize um marianne says uh i like to write under my art journal pages i do as well that is one of my favorite techniques for getting started it gets rid of that blank page um it gives you such an opportunity for um expressing yourself putting meaning into your pages having a cathartic experience that kind of stuff um let's have a look what else is, is are people saying um, oh, somebody else had the same thing with that ink pen. Yes, how funny. Like, just, you know, it's it's both unlucky, but also lucky us, because we get this amazing raw textured uh, mixed media tool. Um, um, oh, I'm glad you enjoyed the live. I have really, really enjoyed hanging out with you all here. Um, I think, is there another live straight after this? I don't, I don't remember. I'd have to look at the schedule, but I do not dare on my computer because, you know, I don't want anything weird to happen. Um, um, let's have a look. Hedgehog Hollow or Maker Forte. Oh, that's, are they art supply shops or, um, um, 
Interesting. Okay, so um, I really hope that you all enjoyed the stream. I hope that you're all staying super creative and getting inspired from this weekend. Um, as I mentioned before, obviously this, uh, this free weekend is brought to you by Everything Art, who also put on Wanderlust, a year-long course, um, which I'm part of, and I can't wait to uh, be creating my lesson, which is going to, with a star supply of paint pens, and um, um, I really hope that you will join if that's something that you'd like to do. Um, the course is normally $175, but it is currently on sale at $99 uh, um, for this, especially for this live weekend and a little bit extending into it. So just in case you want to like, you need to make up your mind or I don't know, wait until payday or something. Um, then um, it's until the 31st of October that you can sign up for uh, $99 and if you would like to support me um, then you can use my uh, affiliate link which is actually in the uh, in the stream in this stream here tinyurl.com slash wanderlust 23 ifc um, if you would like to uh, use my affiliate link that um, you know that supports me and uh, doesn't cost you any extra so it's it's a super uh, super nice for me if uh, if you if you do that um, Thank you all so much. I'm really glad that you all enjoyed it. You've been so supportive um, and it's been so much fun hanging out with you. Um, and um, yeah, I'm just like super, super excited, super grateful. I'm super inspired as well. Just like playing with art supplies. It always, you know, I always think, think like, oh, I don't have any ideas. Oh, I don't have any time. Oh, I don't really want to. And then I'm just like doodling with a pen or pushing some paint around. And I'm like, I could go for hours and hours. So thank you all so much for watching. I'm just going to just read your comments. Uh, thank you all so much and for your participation in the chat. And um, right, I'm going to. Uh, finish the stream now so that you can all grab yourself a drink uh, get ready and stuff for the next um, for the next uh, what do you call it the next stream or the next video um, and I wish you all a super super creative day week month life because <laughs> that's what this is okay all right thanks very much um, oh my husband's just come in to like film me for social media I think <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. And I will see you around.